just when you thought the international break had taken its last championship managerial victim, upstep Hull City, who have sacked manager Shota Arvaladza. They're playing tonight. Unbelievable timing from Hull. The international break ends at 8pm tonight with, of course, Hull City playing Luton live on TV. And they've waited until now to fire their boss. Get your thoughts in via the comments. I'll give you mine right now. Hull bought in Arvalaza at the back end of January with the timing very obviously lining up with the takeover at the club. It was January 19th when the club changed hands. Incumbent boss Grant McCann was given the boot on January 25th. Arvalaza arrived on January 27th. With just a couple of days left in the transfer window, a few deals were done and Arvalaza set about finishing the season. Under Grant McCann, Hull had played 27 games and scored 29 points at a rate of 1.07 points per game. They just actually won back-to-back -back games and beaten Bournemouth, who would eventually be promoted automatically. Under Arvalaza, Hull picked up a further 22 points in the remaining 19 games. So a little trend up, nothing massive, 1.07 points per game to 1.15 they ultimately finished 19th, but don't forget those Derby points deductions. So in terms of pure on-pitch performance, 20th best in the Championship last season. Into the summer, and things were quite exciting for Hull, with the Turkish ownership group flexing their muscles in the transfer market. Now, a nice lump of money did come in for young star Keane Lewis Potter. In came in 12 frees and loans, I haven't seen the books, neither of you, I suspect. Uh, so maybe some nice salaries being paid to Estepinian, Seri, Figueredo, plenty of others too. And we think none too trivial fees were dropped for Saad Manesh, Cynic and Tufan. Given the kind of unknown nature of where this was going, many adopted Hull pre-season as their dark horses. And certainly, even if they weren't predicting top six, a trend up from 19th was anticipated. Hull went off really nicely in terms of their output with eight points from their first four games, which did include matches against year one parachute teams, Norwich and Burnley. But, and there is a big but here, a look at the circumstances did suggest things might not be working in a sustainable fashion. That opening day victory against Bristol City, for example, saw an Interesting penalty call go in Hull's favour, followed by a heavily deflected 93rd minute winner. On week two, they got a nil-nil at Preston, which probably owed more to North End's poor finishing. They did possibly catch Norwich before they'd got going. We'll give them that one. And then at Burnley, again, they resoundingly lost the XG battle, but left with a point. The next two games were absolute chaos. Another ton of chances conceded. 12 goals flying in either net. A win and a defeat recorded. So the points total did keep moving up. The Tigers were hammered 5-2 by West Brom. That is still the only time the Baggies have clicked this season. They beat a Coventry side 3-2 who was still probably in pre-season mode, weren't they, given their pitch at the CBS was unplayable. Also, in those two games, striker Oscar Estepinian scored five times. He basically couldn't miss another little bit of unsustainable fuel to add to that particular fire. And here came the regression then. The next four games all ending in defeat. Hull scoring one and conceding 11 in that time, plummeting to 20th place, two spots outside the relegation zone. What turned out to be Arvalaza's last game in charge was an insipid 3-0 defeat over at Swansea with alarming signs, lack of confidence and belief, paired with some individual errors that were really just killing Hull. With all of that being said, it did look like, as we came to the end of the international break, that Hull were going to stick with Arvalaza for this run up to the World Cup. We'll talk about why they might have made this last minute call after I give a shout out to our friends at the One Football app, which you can download via the link in the description. And it's absolutely free. Who doesn't like that? Uh, One Football is a lovely, neat location for video news and football statistics. In fact, I have indeed just been on there looking at the whole squad and the lovely, helpful transfer page. 
they have on their show me all the incomings and even new contract extensions. Alongside all the stats and news, you can watch highlights of the Italian Serie A. And every Saturday night, one selected Serie A match will be available to stream live in the app. Again, absolutely free of charge. How about that? That's the One Football app. Go and get it, but please don't use the App Store. Use the link in the description. Okay, back to it. Let's have a look at the statement on the Hull City website today announcing the departure of Shata Arvaladze. Excuse my pronunciation. I don't speak Turkish, neither probably do you. Achen Ilicali, Hull City chairman, said during the international break, we had a number of meetings with Shota to discuss the direction of the team and the future of the club. As these meetings went on, it became clear our views weren't aligned. So we have made the decision to part ways. All sounds a bit fractious, doesn't it? Andy Dawson will be in temporary charge while a successor is found. My thoughts here are twofold. I'm not surprised that Arvalaza has been sacked, but I am surprised at the timing. We have a combination of owner bringing in new players at some expense. Arvalaza is their guy. He didn't get a tune out of them. And what sounds like a bit of a tense relationship has gone south during the old evil international break. With hindsight, Hull's good start can be explained away fairly reasonably with the factors I mentioned early in the video. The trend is not a good one and there's also the risk down the bottom of that championship table at the moment of the likes of West Brom, Borough and Coventry below them all possibly, probably improving in the next phase of the season. The timing does seem crazy, doesn't it? On the eve of a game and on literally the last day of the international break. But again, if there's been a fallout and it is untenable, then it is what it is. And that can possibly explain away why this has happened. Now, I wasn't there. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Um, look, Avalazza was said to be a good guy with a great sense of humour, but his management just didn't appear to be up to par, did it particularly these last couple of months. So whilst I don't like to see people losing their jobs, I don't think we need to get into outrage mode, yelling at the owners on the basis of what we know in their short run so far. Sometimes it is the right decision to sack somebody, however sad that may be for the person losing their job. What we do know is the pressure is now on this new Turkish regime um, in terms of outlining and hiring a decent replacement. And if their first appointment was anything to go by, again, I'm in speculation mode here, they seem to know what they want. And that seems to be the European or more specifically the Turkish market rather than what would be a pivot to the normal names that have been mentioned for the many, many jobs around at the moment in the championship. Get your thoughts in then via the comments. What do you think of this decision and where should the Hull higher-ups be looking for the next manager? If you enjoyed the video, do get involved over on TikTok and Instagram where we have short form versions of our content. If I waffle on a little bit too long for you, you can support via Patreon. And if you're hanging around here on YouTube, just chilling out watching some videos, make sure you hit like on this one. And why not go and watch another one? To my left, here are this week's championship predictions. And to my right, my thoughts on Shutter Arvalaza's arrival back in January.